Okay, we seem to be running. So welcome to um, installment two of our lectures about simulation and Simulink. The first uh, part we saw, we didn't get into Simulink, we just talked about the nature of computer simulations and, and, and how it fits into the theory and differential equations and all that. Uh, so if you didn't see that and you're not really sure what a computer simulation is, um, and go ahead and click back to that. It's only about, it's less than 20 minutes, it's not too bad. Um, in this case, we're going to actually use simul Simulink. And, um, but before we do that, let's just, let's just talk about what problem we're going to try to simulate, and then go ahead and do that. So um, what we've got here, excuse me, my mouse was in the wrong spot. There we go. So um, we're mechanical engineers. Let's go with what we know, which is the, um, the spring mass damper problem, the ubiquitous spring mass damper problem. We have a mass sitting on a spring. We have a damper. We, we uh, define the x, the displacement of the mass, is positive upward. It's shown here in um, what we'll assume is an equilibrium position. So that means when x equals 0, it's when the, the mass is resting on the spring in equilibrium. So we don't have to worry about what we call the static displacement or the, you know, the gravitational offset of the spring. We'll just start here. And we know that the differential equation is straightforward, right? It's mx double dot equals minus kx minus bx dot. Um, and, and, and it's important to think about what this equation is. It is um, a manifestation of Newton's second law of motion, that um, the summation of forces equals mass times acceleration. So uh, x double dot, second derivative displacement, that's acceleration. Uh, there's mass, so on the right-hand side, we have a summation of forces. Um, we have Kx, which is the spring force. We have uh, Bx dot, which is the damping force. So we're going to go to Simulink and simulate it, but let's, let me, let's look at this a little bit longer before we jump to it. So um, again, I, all I did here was divide through by mass. So here's my summation of forces now within this bracket. I multiply it times 1 over m, and I get the acceleration. So let's focus on that a second. Um, remember in our first video, we talked about how a computer simulation is really about integrating, right? It's, it's about, um, it's about um, finding these derivatives and integrating them to find the values. We talked about state variables, which we'll get back to in a second. But clearly, this is the key to our simulation. If we can, if we can integrate x double dot, we get x dot, the velocity. And if we integrate that, we'll get displacement, and we've solved our problem. Um, and again, uh, as I mentioned before, this kx is the spring force, obviously, that's Hooke's law. The minus sign just tells us that the spring's going to resist motion. As x, if x is positive upward, so if x is moving upward, the spring's holding it back, right? And the more, you know, the more it moves away from its equilibrium position, the more it's pulling back. Uh, similarly, this other component is the damping force. Same thing, it opposes motion, but instead of being proportional to displacement, it's proportional to velocity. And before we go to Simulink, let me kind of jump to the end. What we're going to do is build this block diagram. And I want to talk about this a second, because you may not be familiar with block diagrams. I assume at this point pretty much everyone's seen this, but let's just talk about it briefly. Each one of these lines represents a physical variable, and each one of these blocks represents an operation on those physical variables, okay, or mathematical variables, if you will. So uh, I'm going to start right here in the middle. See this this part I'm highlighting right here um, is a line that's feeding into this block, and this is the line where x double dot appears. This is where we've represented x double dot. So I'm going to start here and kind of work out. So x double dot goes to this block labeled 1 over s, and this is Simulink's symbology for an integration with respect to time. It actually is a throwback to the Laplace uh, analysis. Here, quick aside, I hate that analogy. I hate using Laplace variables in this because Laplace, as we mentioned in the last lecture, focuses on linear systems. This, this simul Simulink and, and the tools we're talking about aren't restricted to linear systems. But it is what it is. They've had this for over 10 years, so they're not going to change it just because I complain about it. So if we have the, the, accel the acceleration, x double dot, on this symbol line, goes through this first uh, integration block, and what comes out of here is velocity. And just by 
convention, we label the integration blocks with its output. The, so the output of this integration block is velocity, and we just have another integration block. The output of that's displacement. So what we've got here is symbolically representing or instructing to the uh, simulation package that we solve, numerically solve this differential equation. So, so that's the easy part. This little symbol here on the end looks like a little oscilloscope, or it's supposed to, and it's, it's how we're going to monitor. It's how we're going to look at the data as, as it comes out. Okay, let's go over to the front end of this, this um, block diagram. These triangles here, they all represent what they call them gain blocks, but they're just multiplying their coefficients, multiplying the input signal by whatever is inside this block, and, and that's what comes in the output signal. I've labeled these uh, related to the coefficients they represent. So remember that equation we had, I'll just back up to that, showed that uh, x double dot was 1 over m times the sum of these two elements. And indeed, we have a 1 over m block here. So, so uh, what we have here is um, the sum of the two forces. This circle here with the two minus signs in it, this is called a summing junction. It's called a summing junction, but you can subtract from it too. And we'll show how we do this. But, but what's this saying is that the output here is the numeric sum of these two, but it could pick up a, a minus sign if you set it up this way, which we did. So what it's saying is that this signal is this signal minus, is minus the signal minus the signal, exactly what we looked for. And then just complete this, we have velocity where we're picking up that signal. It's like tapping off of it, multiplying it times the B factor. So there's velocity times B, X dot times B. So that's the damping force. Here's we're tapping X. X times K is the spring force. We bring these to a summing junction with the two minus signs, and that's what we have here. Here's the KX, here's the BX dot. Going back forward again, this line is the net force acting on the mass. This is 1 over m, so this line is 1 over m times the net force acting on the mass, which is acceleration. So to a large extent, this part of the block diagram here, the summing junction, this 1 over m, this is a graphical representation of Newton's second law of motion. Simple as that. So, so what we're going to do is, is build this in Simulink, and, and, the, and the process is similar for any kind of system. Kind of focus on the highest derivative, and then integrate it, and then using the various blocks that are in the library of Simulink, and we'll see that in a second, build that algebraic relationship um, that reflects the definition of the highest order derivative. It's, it's actually, it can get complicated, but it's not too bad. So let's, um, let's go to Simulink. Let's go to MATLAB and Simulink. Um, you see here the, the MATLAB window. I've been kind of messing around, so there's some things up in here. Um, I'm not sure what version you guys have available to you. I'm a textbook author. I work in MATLAB, so they let me have a textbook uh, author's license. So I keep my pretty up to date, because I have to, because by the time a book comes out, it's two years later. Um, but it'll have the basic ideas here. Here's the command window with the double uh, greater than sign prompts. You can type things into there. Uh, workspace. Right now I've got it all cleared out. What you want to do is bring up the Simulink library and it's going to be up here in the toolbar and here we'll see it right here at the very top. Uh, it says Simulink library. I've already done it because it takes time and I didn't want to take time in the video so I'll bring this onto, onto the screen. So this is the, the, the um, Simulink library and there's lots of different sub libraries within it. Um, this is the commonly used well, this, yeah, this is, this is the main library. So we start by saying I want a new simulation. So here, this little icon in the toolbar, it says new model. I'm going to press that. Wait a second or two, because my computer really stinks. Um, I'll get in a second or two. Dare I press it again to see what happens? Because what's likely to happen is I'll get two of them, right? Okay, it's coming up. It's just over on the other window. Let me drag it over to you guys so you can see it. There it is. 
Um, not sure what's going on here. My computer, my computer video is kind of screwed up. But uh, it's just a blank slate. We build our block diagram on this window. Actually, I'm pointing to it on the screen, but I think the way you see it is probably up here, right? Um, so go over to the, the Simulate Block Library and double click on Continuous. And we see here, so this is for, for ordinary differential equations. Continuous here in this context means as opposed to discrete, which is like one time step at a time. This is, this is um, typical differential equations. And here is the integrator block. So I'm going to drag that over here put it in my window, and um, and that's really the only thing I wanted out of there. Um, I want some mathematics, because I want gains and summing junctions. Lots and lots and lots of things here, but um, I'm going to scroll down. Here's the summing junction, um, and where's my gain? And there's my gain. Okay, so those are all the blocks we used. We had one more, right? We had the, the oscilloscope. So let's do that. So that's um, these two subtopics, topics, sinks and sources. These are like sources are inputs, things that you're putting into your system. Sinks are things that are taking out of your system. Uh, and these are generally displays. So here's my scope. I'm going to put that over here. Okay. So um, these are the only kinds of blocks I need for this particular model. Um, so let me just kind of set this up. So remember, we started with um, with acceleration. I'm going to move things over a little bit. So there's this was the uh, the first integrator. Acceleration comes into there. I highlight the label and I'll say velocity. Click off there. Now I want another integrator because I want to integrate velocity to get position. So I right click on this. So I'm moving the mouse up here. See, it's showing it's highlighted. And when I right click and drag, it just creates a new a new um, a new block that's the same as the other one. So instead, you can you know you could drag another one from our library, or you could do a copy and paste. But if you just right click and drag, it it copies it for you. Um, and see, it gave it a new label called the velocity one. That's all well and good, but I want this to stay displacement. Okay. So let's connect these two up. And all I'm doing here is just using the regular mouse click to go from one to the other. And it just, it's like drawing it together. And remember that what we had before here was the gain, the 1 over m, and that. So let me wait. So there's the, there's the first row. There's the beginning of the, uh, the um, simulation for a spring mass damper system. Remember uh, the summing junction showed the two forces coming in with minus signs. Let's double click on there. I'm hoping your computer runs better than mine. This is this is annoying. It doesn't take this long normally. I just have a real old computer in my office. And you'll notice a little different background here. I'm in my office in Yankee building today, not um, in my basement. So there I show instead of those two plus signs, I'm gonna put two minus signs. And you see it changed right away on my on my screen. So it's working. Um, so remember I had velocity feeding back through a gain block and the displacement through a gain block. I need another gain block. So even though this one's already hooked up, I can still do the right click and drag trick. So now it's, it's created a new one. Let's do it twice because I need two of them. Um, but here's a problem. It's facing the wrong way. I want to go from here this way. I want to go backwards, right? Um, well, no problem. Go ahead and right click on this. It brings up a context menu when it feels like it. Here it is. Uh, and then one of these is rotate and flip. So we want to choose flip block. And it does that. And we'll do that in the second one. Try to. Okay, so now they're facing the right way. I'm going to tighten it up a little. Okay, one last trick and we're ready to run this thing. If I want to tap off of an existing line, so if I just do a regular click on here, I get this kind of weird stuff. This isn't what I want to do. I want to create a T, right? Or, yeah, T off here. So what you do is you right click on that and then drag it off and connect it. Do the same thing here. Right click and drag and then go to regular clicks to finish this critter. And you will see the same simulation I had before. Um, 
So, so let's let's go down that checklist. The six things that I talked about in my first uh, presentation. We need a representation of the model itself. Well, that's what I've just done, right? Here it is. Um, we need parameter values, so that'll be the next thing. We need initial conditions. We might have inputs. We need outputs, and we need run control parameters. So those were the six things. Uh, let's let's look at the parameters. Well, these are the three parameters: mass. And in this case, it's one over mass. Um, this is the B, so I'm going to change that label to show B. And this is well, it's not quite right, is it? So I get for not having my glasses on. Okay. So now this should look just like it, it did in my uh, original one, the picture I had in the in the um, PowerPoint. So how do you change those values? Well, it shouldn't surprise you that you double click on them. Brings up a block diagram. Let's not pay attention to the, and I'm sorry, brings up a dialog box. Let's not pay attention to these other things other than it just needs a value. So um, if the mass were say one kilogram, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something kind of silly here just, just to be clear. Remember this is one over the mass. So I'm going to say you can put little mathematical expressions in here as long as MATLAB understands them. It'll understand one over one and actually shows you uh, that that's what you put in there. Um, same thing with B, though I'm going to keep all the values of this as one. In other words, the mass is one kilogram, the spring is one newton per meter, the damping ratio is one newton per meter, one newton second per meter. Um, so that's parameter values. Initial conditions we find by double clicking on the integration block. Again, let's not pay attention to the other things, just where it says initial condition. And I'm going to give it an initial velocity of one and keep the initial displacement as um, zero. So it's so it's so this simulation starts with the mass at rest, but for some, in some magic way it got a initial velocity upward positive of one meter per second. And if you think about that, if you remember from physics, this is not this is similar to what happens if you hit it with a hammer, right? If you have, to, if you have a, a impact, um, you know, well, and actually what you remembered in dynamics, an impulse, right? A very high value short duration force um, changes the velocity in a very short period of time. So so this is one way of representing uh, an impulsive response. Okay, so let's go down our list. Structure the, uh, the uh, simulation itself, that's the block diagram. Parameter values, check. Initial conditions, check. Inputs, we didn't really talk about inputs. We didn't, the, the little picture we had with the block diagram didn't show any force, external forces acting on the mass, so we'll leave, we don't have any, we don't need inputs. Outputs, well that's what the scope is for. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and then the, the only thing left is run control parameters, uh, which are always set by default, but the only the thing you can change real easily is this, this um, thing up here at the top, which is the final time. When does it stop? Because you want the simulation to stop at some time. So what this is saying is it'll run for 10 seconds in simulation time. Uh, and not surprisingly, there's a play button, so let's just press that and see what happens. It's thinking about it. Again, my computer's slow. There's the there's a little progress bar down here. So that that tone, that little damped bunk tone, says it's it's finished. Um, I don't think I've got anything else open. You, you, you can't see anything, right? If you didn't put a simulation block, or I'm sorry, a, a scope block, you'd have no way of knowing what happened. So I'm going to double click on this, open it up. It's going to come to my second screen, I think. I'm going to drag it over when it opens up. And there it is. Now, looks pretty uninteresting. Uh, these scope blocks start with a scale of plus or minus five. I'm going to expand it so you can get a better look at it. Um, so you can see a little bit of this sort of spring mass damper response, but I want to scale it better. Uh, so there's, there's this little arrow here that says auto scale. Uh, and here you go. So remember I said we started with a one meter per second velocity upward. And so here's the displacement. So we see it moving upward, goes up to about a half a meter or so, turns around, comes back, undershoots. There's the equilibrium position, comes over. And so we have this um, fairly heavily damped but still oscillatory response. So um, 
I would leave it to you, and I suggest you do this, is look at that differential equation and um, with those parameter values, mass is one, stiffness is one, damping factor is one, and look at the differential equation and say, okay, what would be the natural frequency of this system and what would be the damping ratio, the zeta, okay? Find those two values and then look at this response and convince yourself that those are consistent with each other. Okay, and that's just not, I'm not doing that just to give you something to do because I think, you know, I think you're, you're, you're looking you're, that you're bored and need more work. That's an essential part of computer simulation is when you get a response, does it make sense? You know, does it pass the, you know, the, the smell test? Um, and I've already done that for this particular response. I've already said, okay, I did the math in my head because I do this all the time. And I said, yes, for both natural frequency and for damping ratio, this makes sense. So that's the, that's the beginning of it. Uh, this, um, we've gone about 20 minutes. That's about as long as I'd like to make these videos. Let me do one more thing, and then we'll, we'll pick this up with part three. Let's change a parameter and see what happens to the response. So let's say um, the spring stiffness isn't one, but it's two. So we've made, made the spring twice as stiff. And we should ask ourselves the question, what do we expect to happen with a stiffer spring? Will it be, will it, oscillate more or less? Will it have more overshoot, less overshoot? Will it, um, will it be, its, it's oscillations be faster or not? And, and so let's, uh, you know, we can think that through. Well, you know, going back to what this response looks like, obviously with a stiffer spring, it's going to meet resistance. More resistance this goes up. So I wouldn't expect it to go as high. So this, this peak was at about 0.55. I would expect when we run the simulation again, that'll be smaller. I also expect it to be faster. Natural frequency uh, is radical k over m, right? Square root of k over m, so bigger k, higher frequency. Uh, will it be more oscillatory or less? In other words, uh, you know, uh, more ringy or not? I'm not sure. That's a little subtler, um, and I'll leave that for you to figure out. So I'm going to press the, the run button here. Um, again, it's taking way longer than it should. I need a new computer in my office. Tell Dr. Savick I need a new computer. Um, there it ran. Uh, again, let's hit auto scale, and uh, we'll see that, um, yes, if you compare those two responses, my prediction uh, was pretty close. Remember, it peaked at 0.55 before. Now it peaks about 0.45. Um, you'll notice that um, I didn't really explicitly draw this out, but it is, the natural frequency is faster. It's not as uh, slow as it was before, and it's a little ringier, too. It looks like it might do this for a little longer, so it's a little less damped on a relative scale. Um, so that's, that's enough for this video. Um, that should give you a, a flavor for it. So before you go to part three, do this. Have this, run the simulation. Look at the differential equation that describes the spring mass damper system. See how it relates. Convince yourself that these responses make sense. And then we'll have some more fun. We'll, we'll introduce some nonlinearities in part three. So that's it. Thanks a lot.